Okay, now in this video we're going to have a look at the release lever and the release bearing that is on the gearbox side. To remove this assembly, you remove the release bearing first and then pull the fork towards the center and away off the pivot, like so, and it's away. On the pressure plate side, on the diaphragm fingers, you can see here where the release bearing has been working. This one is not too badly worn at all, in fact it's hardly done any work whatsoever. These can actually be badly worn. A standard release bearing for the LT77 R380 has a plastic bearing carrier and a bearing attached to it. The shiny one on the left hand side is a heavier duty version to the standard part. The standard bearing, now this is common and this is a Land Rover part, it's also fitted to many other vehicles. It will generally last the life of a clutch. We have these two and they are comparable. In fact, they are just about the same except for the materials and the bearing, which should be heavier duty and take more punishment. The part number is FTC 5200HD. They are interchangeable and I'll prove this by taking a release bearing off and putting this on to the LT77 Defender gearbox just like that easy the one thing here that you get caught out with sometimes is there's actually a peg hole for the staple to hold this bearing just gently to the um, release arm and that needs to be put upwards right so this thing here generally you chuck it away you don't reuse it whatever it's a disposable item whereas before you used to be able to push a bearing onto the bearing carrier uh, however, you probably won't find this on a Land Rover anyway. The other major component is the release lever arm with slipper pads which fits on a pivot. Okay, just for demonstration purposes, I have an LT77. This is a short bow housing. And here is a longer bow housing which could be an LT77 or an R380. This is longer but it has an extension and the pivot is here to put your release lever on. Okay, regardless of gearbox, bell housing, you have your pivot just here, the pivot ball, which is should be lubricated when you assemble it. It pivots in this cup here on the release lever. All right, easy enough, yep. These have a serious issue because what happens is that they wear and they crack. You can see the crack in this one here. This is by far the most common failure of clutches when you lose your pedal is the pivot has gone through and you can see it on this photograph here. And that is an issue that has been around for a long time. Now, strolling through my LDV manuals, which is R380 and LT77, there was an update actually explaining that a metal plate could be put on here to extend longevity. Here this is in the flesh, and all it is is a bar that's been welded over the cup on the other side so it won't go through and fail. This is what is called the heavy duty clutch fork now. You could weld a bar on a standard fork or you could buy a part which is FTC 2957HD, which is this one. What's not advisable is to fit a good condition second hand part. Taking into consideration the clutch is gonna be in there a long time, you might end up with this failure and then losing the clutch completely. You'll be happy to know that not all Land Rovers suffer from this because there is also a cast release fork on TD5s and the V8s and some of the Range Rovers. All right, so the push rod, which is on the lever arm, is pushed by the slave cylinder, right, like so. It's connected and that does a lot of work. A little bit of a heads up that they can actually come in different lengths. Either Defender or Discovery, long bell housing or short bell housing. These ones are off Discovery gearboxes and that one's off a Defender, which is the same as this LT77 gearbox. Well, they fit in here and they're lubricated, held on by a plastic clip. And just as a um, demonstration here, fitting the plastic clip once the fork is in doesn't work. It is really awkward to fit. It might be possible, however, always fit a new clip when you do this job. There's a small kit available here from Paddock. Right, so I can't do this. I can't get it in there with the bell housing on, so I'm gonna put it in carefully. And then, now that it's fixed, I can hang this, slip it through, and get the fork on. 
The release lever also has slipper pads on these pins and these should be lubricated not only for the fact that they need to work but it's also to stick these slipper pads on when you fit it to the gearbox so they don't drop out okay it's almost like a little bit of glue you should use EP3 or something like copper slip that will stick them in place so you're ready to go the staple I mentioned earlier is quite an important part fits in the hole on the heavy duty one or in the case of the plastic type it fits in a slot there's a hole in the release lever so it holds it like this because the lever is actually on the opposite side on these two gearboxes the hole in the release lever is only at the bottom from what I can see on this release lever so you have to fit this at the bottom the job of this staple when I can get it right because it can be a bit tricky fitting it it stops the release bearing from falling off the arm while you're assembling generally I'm inclined to fit the staple while I'm fitting the fork with a few pieces onto it so assembling it is easy I'm sure that you can do this blindfolded it's just a matter of getting the clip over the ball and slipping it into place and making sure the slipper pads do not fall off this can be a bit awkward but if you get the push rod through where the slave cylinder is you're home and dry make sure you turn your slipper pad so the broadest parts are outwards when you fit your release bearing you want to ensure that there is a nice snug fit okay which it should be the slipper pads are shaped in a certain position and that's to sit in this part of the release bearing if you didn't know it needs to sit on that and that is correct and once that's dropped into place you can then slip your clip across I've got to do this off the gearbox so you can see it now you might get it wrong it might not exactly be positioned in the right place you've got to make sure that it sits in the groove like so the staple has a very simple job and while we're assembling and while we're moving stuff about we want to make sure that it all stays in position so if we have the push rod and we move it the release bearing will stay with the slipper pads that is as simple as that okay one last thing usually I'd fit a brand new slave cylinder this is only demonstration and if the slave cylinder has any types of shims then you fit them back there's a reason for this this is a distancing piece it's not a gasket alright so I always fit new bolts and a new slave cylinder generally you'll have the slave cylinder dangling down ready to just slip back on once the gearbox is mated to the engine next video will show you how to replace this toe bearing in the crankshaft